And now to show you a wonderful doll with her original trousseau. Um, so extraordinary to have this happen. You may have it happen to you maybe two or three times in your collecting life. When you can find an all original jumeau or all original doll of any type with its original wig, body, costume, and then a trousseau. It's just extraordinary to find. I talked to you before about the Jumeau book. I wanted to show you a cover of the Jumeau book because if you do not have this, you must have this if you're going to be a serious collector at all. It's, it's very, very definitive in helping you identify certain models and identify the time period they were made. Now, this Jumeau, is, I was so excited when it came in because, well, first of all, the girl was wearing this bonnet. And this is the bonnet that in our catalog you will see her wearing. And a week later came a package in the mail from the original family owner saying, oh, we found two more bonnets that belong to the doll. And I said, oh, no, the catalog's gone to press. Be but you're able to see them here. Here is this wonderful Jumeau in her factory original dress and with her original bonnet. I'm going to turn her around so you're able to see her costume completely. And I do want to just lean her backward a bit so you can see her wonderful hat and all of the details of it. And then she will come around again and you will see her at the front. Just a fabulous doll. Beautiful, that beautiful soft um, blonde mohair wig that Jamo made for their dolls. It's so extraordinary to find. Another outfit this pink cotton ensemble with a little cutwork lace collar and the little matching bonnet with the rose ribbons. And then another wonderful costume with the blue velvet on the top and the polka dot. And look at how the pleats are made here. Very, very typical way of making like a double box pleat. Very, very lovely. And the costumes were made with that slightly dropped waist so they're easy to fit to the dolls. And little details, like you'll see the feather stitching along here, and then you'll see the blue um, silk ribbon matching the blue velvet exactly. Just wonderful. Another wonderful costume, like almost, a, um, almost to me like a swimsuit. And another beautiful cotton dress with wonderful tucks at the front and the back and the sleeves cup cuffs. Wonderful tucking. Beautiful print. And it's almost like those blue and red flowers were a, a tease for what would become the Jameau chemise of maybe eight years later. This is not with that doll, but I did want to show you, and this is the type of thing that uh, serious collectors are always looking for, and those are original shoes, because as I said, Jameau made everything in his own factory. And if you can f have the original shoes on your doll, that's very, very desirable. Very typical, the way it's made with the overcast stitching around the side. I always thought it was interesting. They made them with the black and the brown, so really could go with many different color ensembles. And then on the bottom, the Jumeau signature. And there were various signatures were made over uh, like a 10-year period. And this is the one for E.J. Bebe. Very rare to find. And a little number at the top. Let me see if it shows up here. It shows up on this one better, the little number 11 at the top, corresponding to the size 11. At this time, in the Paris department stores that would issue their trend catalogs every Christmas, um, you would see a variety of doll costumes that would be offered. And they would sh tell the size, 8, 9, 10. And those sizes always corresponded, even though they never said it always corresponded to that, those particular size jumeaux. It reminds me of similar today because the American Girl is so popular, very often you could go into a toy store and you would find uh, costumes and the little, with a little sign saying, made to fit an 18-inch child doll. And the unspoken message is they're made to accommodate to the American Girl doll. Well, Jumeau was doing the same thing 100 years earlier. It's very curious in the collecting of dolls in determining their value, um, how rarity affects them. A doll can be so rare that it really becomes a very good buy for collectors because so few of them show up, collectors are a little apprehensive about them, they don't know how to judge them, they don't know how, what their value should be. 
and it gives you a wonderful opportunity to get a rare and gorgeous doll in your collection because other collectors are a little afraid of it. And this is a wonderful example. This is a Joani doll. Um, Joani produced uh, dolls for a very short period of time and very few of them show up today. They're very desirable to find if you know what you are looking for. And what you do want to look when you find them, a very, very distinctive face of the Joani, and you want to look for ones that have really gorgeous bisque and these gorgeous deep paperweight eyes that almost look of the quality of the Jameau type of eyes. They're so fine. We have this beautiful example um, appearing from the collection of Evelyn Heideprim and wearing this wonderful antique Mariner costume. So Joanny, J-O-A-N-N-Y, look that name up in your French encyclopedia, learn about it, a wonderful, wonderful doll to have. Now a doll that no one needs talking about, no one needs to be told what it is, are the bebés of Leon Casimir Brew. And I have, I want to show you before we look at the costumed ones, I want to show you two dolls that are being sold naked because it's important that you can learn to see their bodies and understand the different body types of the brew that were made over a period of time. Whenever you see the brew with this body that is sometimes called its early crouch body, which is really a pretty horrible name, but kind of does describe it because the doll looks like it's sort of crouching down. Um, it's, this would be an early body from Brew because he truly had not yet learned how to perfect the kid Bebe body. Remember, up until 1875 or 76, the kid body was the body of choice for the poupées. Of course, there were wooden bodies that Brew made, but most of the dolls were made of kid. When they decided to make the Bebe, uh, most of the makers, such as Jumeau, turned to the composition body that could be ball-jointed and articulated. But Brew was a traditionalist, set in his ways, and he said, I am going to stick with making the kid body that I've always made. And so his little Bebe was shorter, plumper, but still made with kid. Now, what were the problems that happened? Was it going to be sitting? Was it going to be standing? He couldn't quite figure out how to have it accomplish either one. So he sort of made this halfway in between. Um, the downside of it is, as a collector, sometimes it can be hard to display the doll. The upside of it is, it's a clue that you have a very, very rare early doll by Brew. And when you can find one with a body as sturdy as this one is, that's just great. And you can see the different seams, how it was made, a very meticulous making of the doll. Look at the jointing, the gusset jointing where the, it's put together. And this one has held to perfection over so many years that that makes it desirable. When you see a kid uh, brew described as having a scalloped collarette, that means this band that goes around the upper torso, an extra band of kid, and it has a scallop design on the top. And seeing the body um, naked like this, you're able to see his very defined little molded bosom and the molded shoulder blades at the back. Very, very fine detail done by him. This one, again, just looking at little things, has its original lamb's wool wig, which when you're not on the know, you tend to think, ooh, that's a messed up kind of hairdo, but it's not. It's original, and it's very, very desirable to have. So this is a, a wonderful example. Now, if you notice, she has little painted teeth. And there's like a space between her mouth. Now, what is that all about? It wasn't just a sculpting technique that was being done. It had a purpose. And its purpose appears in the other model we're showing to you, which is the tateur, the baby tateur, marketed by Brew as that model, as that with that name, Baby Tatur, the nursing brew, as we name it. And it has, I'm going to pull its wig off and show you, since you may never have had a chance to see one. It has the mechanism in the back of the head, the rubber ball mechanism with the metal frame. And the ball was the sucking mechanism that worked from the turn screw at the back of the head and the baby had a little baby bottle with a rubber nipple and would actually um, suck the baby bottle. Um, this doll appeared and was a very, actually a really popular doll. It was made for about 10 years and made with different bodies. And this one is the body that appeared 
right at the end of the brew period of the company, about 1884, when it starts to have these hinged legs. And it's right at the time when uh, Mr. Chevreau took over the company, but Brew was still working in it. So right at that time, if you, if you can get a copy of the Brew book and own that book, you can identify your Brew dolls almost down to an exact year of when they were made. So the reason for the space with the painted teeth on the other dolls, so in this case with the Bebe Tatur, they could drill a little hole in the mouth, as you can see in this example. So you can have, in this case, a very beautiful doll. If you simply wish to have a beautiful doll um, sitting on your shelf, this is a gorgeous doll. And then you have the added benefit of the mechanical <coughs> mechanisms that it does. But what everyone really wants, more than anything, they want the classic brews. This is the first. This is the Bebe Brevet, as it is known, because it had a paper label on the chest saying Brevet. In other words, Brew had registered, this model had registered his little Bebe. And here we have an example, absolutely fabulous example, in its sturdy, sturdy original body, beautiful biscans, and original costume, which is absolutely wonderful. And I want you to see her shoes. They have the B initial. Brew shoes come marked two ways. Some come with this B script initial, and others actually say Brew in Paris. But this little doll, when you think about, you, when you, you know, you do your checkpoints of what do you look for in a doll, quality, originality, sturdiness of condition, beautiful painting, other features of rarity, in this case the size, this doll is a winner in every way. Our cover doll on the Kaleidoscope auction. Um, a, because she deserved to be a cover doll in every way, and B, because her little costume is a kaleidoscope of colors and it's Scottish plaid, once again, it's the plaid design. And this is a, the brew from um, the later period. This is the classic Brew June doll. And if you ask most collectors which model of brew do they want, this is the classic period that they like to have. And this example is so extraordinary because she's so beautiful and this, in this costume with her flowing red Scottish hair, she is just a winner in every way. And then finally, a large, beautiful jumeau in the larger size and just very, very beautiful. And look at her gorgeous eyes. They're very, very stunning. And I brought out two little pieces of furniture once again to show you how sometimes just putting a small piece of furniture next to your doll sort of brings it to life. It becomes like in a little animated setting. And in this case, your little brew could be standing next to the wonderful um, bronze and marble table with the Vienna clock with the painted enamel scenes alongside.